The final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 1615 in the name of David Stewart on support for Campbellton Airport as spaceport. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Would those members who wish to speak in the debate please press the request to speak buttons now? I'm really intrigued by this debate, Mr Stewart, so I call on David Stewart to open this debate. Seven minutes, please. Yeah. Um, thank you for the vote of confidence, President Officer, and um, I'm delighted to be able to come and speak today. On July the 9th, 1962, uh, a Thor Delta rocket was launched from Cape Canaveral. On board was the UK's Aerial One satellite. Not only does this make the UK the third country, after the USA and the former Soviet Union, to operate a satellite, but it also launched the UK's space industry. An industry which has developed to the point that in 2014, it contributed 11.8 billion to the British economy and supported 35,000 jobs, according to the UK government's own figures. Just as the satellite began the UK space industry, so it's satellites that will allow the UK government to secure the ambition of a space industry worth 40 billion by 2030, which will re represent a 10% share of the global space industry market. A first step towards that goal was the UK government's announcement that intended to develop a single site as the UK's spaceport. And in July 2014, a short list of potential sites was announced with a view that the chosen site would be up and running by 2018. The original shortlist of eight was reduced to five, which included three sites in Scotland, Prestwick, Campbelltown and Stornoway. And currently, Macbahanish, the, ge the genetic community area which covers uh, Campbelltown, is the only runway that meets the requirement of the runway length for horizontal length. However, in, um, sorry, horizontal launch. However, in May of this year, the Department of Transport wrote to the spaceport bidders to inform of the decision to end the bidding process and to move towards a licensing model. Now, in previous debates, President Officer, I have supported the case for the selection of Camelodon Airport, and I am still of the opinion this is the best site for a spaceport. Now, it should be remembered, and many members will be aware of this, that Camelodon Airport was developed as a military airport, and up until the end of the Cold War, was a major part of NATO's network. For example, in the Second World War, it had the longest runway in Europe. Now, consequently, many millions of pounds were spent on maintaining and building the infrastructure facilities of a high standard, including three jet fuel storage installations and a pipeline to Campbellton Harbour to ensure the safe delivery of high volatile fuel. Now, these facilities remain today in excellent working conditions and will be able to meet the needs not just of the permanent staff, but also of the visiting technicians needed at various times during each stage of the project. Now, when we move, presiding officer, from the satellite launching to space tourism, this good quality on-site accommodation and training facilities will be essential. And it's worth mentioning at this point that Campbelltown Airport is the only UK site that has been approved for use by a spaceport by Virgin Galactic, as well as by NASA. So clearly, safety will be an important factor in the granting of a license. Clearly, the last thing we want to do is the possibility of a mid-air collision with an aircraft. Now, space Spacecraft leaving from the spaceport will take off horizontally, just like a conventional aircraft, and a runway of 3,000 metres is required for this type of launch. As I said earlier, this Campbelltown is the only one of the shortlisted sites to have this requirement. In addition, the runway launches away from any land or hab habitation straight over the Atlantic Ocean, an important safety factor. So lack of population around the spaceport is also very important. Not only can the noise from the takeoff be excessive, much louder than normal aircraft, but takeoff is obviously the most dangerous part of any space mission, with the possibility of an explosion involving many tons of rocket fuel. Though we all hope that an accident will never happen, the relative isolation of Campbelltown Airport would be a significant safety factor in this unlikely event occurring. A satellite launch facility is a long-term project that involves much more than just providing a long runway. To get the most out of the project, room will be needed to develop and to grow. And with a, a site stretching to over 1,000 acres, there is more than ample room for the development not just of a launching site, but associated industries, research and development, and education. And with the dark skies associated with Kintyre due to the lack of light pollution, it would be a great place for an astronomy-based tourist centre. Whilst being sighted in the beautiful Kintyre Peninsula, 
Uh, Camberdale benefits from a reasonably good road system and a harbour that could and probably should have its ferry links developed in keeping with the wishes of the local community. And whilst the airport is only a short flight by uh, fixed wing or helicopter from Glasgow International Airport, it's perfectly capable of handling its own international air traffic. After all, NASA was satisfied to have it as an emergency landing location for its space shuttle, which of course would be transported back home on the back of a Boeing 747. I don't think there's a bigger vote of confidence in Campbellton Airport than that. And of course, Campbellton Harbour itself has recently undergone extensive improvements making it ideal for the delivery of materials before transferring to road vehicles for the short journey to the airport. As I said earlier, the spaceboat model has changed. No longer the UK government looking for just one site. They're looking for a more competitive and commercial model. The shortlisted sites have already passed the first shifting process. So they may well be in pole position when it comes to securing a launch licence. Now, it's unknown if the UK government will make money available for site development, but competing sites can't afford to sit back and wait. The change to license system is not the drawback to Campbellton that may be to other sites, as it requires much less work to make it ready for safe and efficient launches. I'm convinced that Campbellton Airport provides the best location for a spaceport and is best placed to deliver a service in the time wanted by the UK government. As the decision of the UK spaceport was not theirs to take, the Scottish Government, understandably, has not publicly backed uh, Presswick, Stornoway Ware or Campbelltown. Now things have changed. The Scottish Government can choose to let the market decide, or it can play a proactive role in helping Scotland secure a launch licence. For example, it could create an enterprise area status for the spaceport activities at Macrohanish, and perhaps the Minister could comment on that. Any site that wins the licence has the potential to create substantial employment and economic benefits to its community for a long time to come. Scottish Government cooperation is now essential, not just to assist with site development, but to ensure the potential spaceport makes the best commercial and technical uh, partnerships. And I put in record, presiding officer, my thanks to Charlotte Wright and the colleagues of Hanna's Enterprise um, for the support and development of this project. Um, throughout history, and I'll conclude on this point, presiding officer, Scottish scientists have been in the vanguard of innovation and discovery, from James Watt, uh, the, industrial father, the godfather of industrial revolution, to Robert Watson Watt, the inventor of radar. All that, fight, all that continues in the fine development of the current issues we have before us. We ought uh, to, not just the people today to get behind the project, we ought to future generations. We can build on this great, great legacy and grasp this opportunity to be the forefront of space technology, or we can choose to be left behind. Surely there be no greater transport aspiration for the Scottish Parliament than to link Scotland with the moon. Some, some people think we're already in here tethered to the moon individuals, but there we are. Uh, I now call Kenneth Gibson to follow the Edward Mountain. Mr Gibson, four minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I'd like to thank uh, David Stewart for securing valuable debating time in the Chamber on this important matter. I recognise this is a topic on which we both feel strongly. However, I disagree that Campbelltown Airport would be the best choice for Scotland when the site at Prestwick Airport is clearly the better option. And so for the first time since I was first elected in 1999, I must speak against the motion in a member's debate. With the space industry set for rapid growth, we have a tremendous opportunity for Scotland to be home to the first ever spaceport on European soil and a hub for commercial space flights. It would be ideal to showcase our skills in engineering and science and propel ourselves into developing the next generation of space-related industries. This is why it is of the up, up, utmost importance that the right site is chosen. This is an opportunity that is far too good to be lost and we should unite behind a campaign for one site in order to secure this win for all of Scotland. I strongly believe that site should be Prestwick, where some of the largest global aerospace companies are already based, including BAE Systems, Spirit Aerosystems, GE Caledonian, UTC Aerospace Systems, and Woodward Inc. Spirit, Aer Spirit Aerosystems alone employs around 900 people at Prestwick. And so location is key. Prestwick's close proximity to Glasgow, home to some of our nation's finest university graduates and scholars, research teams and innovative companies cannot be underestimated. Clyde Space is a great example of one such company producing and selling small satellite systems, making it a front runner in its field. Nearby Glasgow is an ever growing hub of activity and Presswick, just half an hour from the largest community of space industry employees outside London and the South East is an, is a, has an advantage that cannot be understated. 
Presswick is therefore the superior location, and valuable with a project of this nature. There are 8,000 engineering undergraduates within 50 miles of Prestwick and 4 million people with, uh, living within two hours' travel. The excellent road and rail links to and from Prestwick Airport mean it is easily accessible, with little chance of being stuck behind a timber lorry, as can often happen in a gale. It's happened to me three times on the 26th of September last month. At Prestwick, vehicles will easily be able to transport materials and goods that need to be delivered on site. Central road and rail services make it simple for equipment to be moved and also to attract specialist staff. Of course, in order to be considered as a spaceport, a site must meet the appropriate requirements. Prestwick is more than ready for this, with a runway over 2,980 metres long that frequently handles the largest of aircraft. It also has three air traffic control towers and experience of space flight technology. And I'm not alone in believing Prestwick is the right place for the spaceport. The bid is being led by Stuart McIntyre, a Scottish entrepreneur who has had great experience with British aerospace, Scottish aviation and Prestwick itself. The experience he has brought to the team is invaluable in helping to create an exciting proposal for Presswick Spaceport. A huge part of this is the new and exciting employment opportunities in sectors that include science, technology, engineering and construction. Scotland is already known for being innovative in the developing of these sectors and the Spaceport will take this even further. Other industries will benefit with more spending power in the Ayrshire economy, both from Spaceport workers and increased tourism. The existing Ayrshire and Arm tourism market is worth over 340 million a year, and Ayrshire has a huge appeal across the world with its beautiful coastlines, golf courses, and rich heritage. The spaceport would simply expand on this. Presiding officer, the Scottish Government needs to stop pussyfooting about on this. Having three potential spaceports is unrealistic. Hedging one's bets is more likely to see the spaceport going to Wales or England each of which has only one proposal. Sometimes, Minister, you need to put your eggs in one basket, and this is just such an occasion. So please, Minister, back Prestwick, which has shown itself to be the front runner in the competition for the first spaceport in the UK. This is an incredible opportunity, and Prestwick is clearly the ideal location to secure this important development for Scotland. Uh, thank you. I call Edward Mountain, followed by Neil Bibby. Mr Mountain, four minutes, please. Thank you for presiding officer. I, I want to agree with David Stewart that, and, and I don't believe he's wired to the moon with his suggestion. And I'm supporting the, his, his proposal. Uh, this I was evening. rather speaking of some others in here, including myself, not indeed Mr. Stewart. Okay. Well, in my opinion, there's only really one site in Scotland, and that, and that is the site at MacHanish. And, and the reasons why are the reasons that, that have partly been given. First of all, it's secluded and accessible. It has pedigree, being a former RAF base, having played a very important role in the Cold War. And it's already regarded as an international airfield, having been used by the US Navy and NATO. And it has form, as, as has been mentioned. NASA has identified it during the uh, space shuttle launches and as an emergency landing site. So it's been around, uh, it's been recognized. Now, when the announcement was made to select a spaceport, it was to be done by competition. However, the Department of Transport decided by way, that it was now to be done by way of licensing to ensure that the regulatory, regulatory conditions are met. Now, the head of international aviation in the UK Space Agency welcomed the change. They advised it would create a viable business models and a range of locations, and that it has. The good news is that this also makes Macrahanish probably the most attractive site because they're looking for the following basic requirements. An existing runway that extends over 3,000 metres, the ability to have an airfield that has no conflicting uh, airspace demands, that it's reasonably located from densely populated areas, it has suitable meteorological and environmental conditions, which it does, and the location must be accessible to staff and visitors. Now, Macrohanish ticks all these boxes, and in April 2015, Discover Space UK launched its bid for Campbellton, declaring that they're confident that the site is the best possible option, especially under a licensing agreement. They're the only bidders they feel that have the suitable runway, and they've got the best launch direction with over 1,000 acres of opportunity. Now, the site has also received support, as we've heard, from Virgin Galactic, and they've listed it in their top three preferred sites. Argyll and Butte welcomes, uh, Council welcomes Discovery Space bid. Highlands and Islands Enterprise have also backed the campaign. 
They believe it will encourage people to live and work in Campbellton, which, as we know, will be vitally important and help boost tourism. Now, I believe, Minister, you should be campaigning for Campbelltown to be chosen as the space for it. And really simply because it's the only candidate that meets the requirements. It's approved by NASA. It's got a real operator, Virgin, who want to use it. And its coastal location and quasi-remoteness makes it a perfect spaceport. And one other thing is that I'd like to say that Makrahanish Air Base is owned by a community-based company. They purchased the site for a pound with the intention of revigorating the economy. And you, Minister, can make that happen. So let us join in this journey together and turn a flight of fancy into reality and help make Makrahanish Air Base the first British spaceport. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mount and Neil Bibby, to follow by John Finney. Mr. Bibby, please. Thank you, President Officer. I join members in welcoming uh, the debate this evening, congratulating Dave Stewart on uh, bringing forward this motion. It's clear from contributions so far that aerospace is recognised as a uh, key growth area uh, for the UK and economy. And as Dave Stewart's motion outlines, we should be making every effort to embrace the industries of the future. Aerospace is widely regarded as an emerging market and the creation of new spaceports in the UK presents significant economic opportunities that we must look to take advantage of. As members have outlined, Scotland is well positioned to take advantage of the potential benefits of the expected emergence of new uh, low-cost rocket planes that can launch fare-paying passengers into space and also satellites into orbit. And while uh, we know most of these vehicles are still quite some time away from being operational. There is a belief that if the UK gets its act together now, then we'll be in a position to take advantage uh, of the first wave when they arrive and steal a march on uh, competitors. As has been mentioned, the UK government recently announced its intention to create regulatory conditions for any suitable location that wishes to become a spaceport to take the opportunity to develop and attract commercial space business. This means there is a potential to set up a network of spaceports around the UK rather than a single site as was originally planned. The fact that we have, uh, I think, three potential locations across Scotland, which were all shortlisted in the original competition, should be, should be welcomed. All three of these locations uh, will have individual uh, strengths. Dave Stewart has uh, rightly made reference, and, and as of other members to the sense of Campbelltown as a potential location, which includes, as been mentioned, a 3,000 metre runway, excellent storage facilities for hazardous materials and transport links. Uh, and many members, as Kenny Gibson has done, will point to the strengths um, that Presswick has to offer, uh, including the fact that uh, almost a quarter of a million pounds has been invested to develop Presswick's aerospace uh, sector. And this investment will go towards a comprehensive development programme that includes infrastructure, business development, energy reduction and supply chain development. President officer, the, the potential benefits of having a spaceport in Scotland are clear. Not only would one create skilled jobs and opportunities for high tech uh, supplies and services, it would also provide a boost for the tourism industry. We have an impressive track record when it comes to space technology. The UK is already a world leader in satellite business with a particular strength in small satellites. Scottish companies are already uh, playing a leading role in providing components and systems for uh, those satellites. And as Kenny Gibson also mentioned, uh, the Glasgow-based company Clyspace is widely regarded as one of the most innovative young companies in the UK and has become the largest indigenous space company in Scotland. It produces high quality, high performance systems for very small uh, spacecrafts. Clyde Space was one of the first commercial companies in the world to recognise the potential of the new technology and it has a 40 per cent share components of the global market for power components uh, for so-called CubeSats. So we have much to be proud of, President Officer, and what spaceports provide is the opportunity for us to be ahead of the curve when it comes to the next generation of space travel. There are wide-ranging potential benefits, not only to the areas in which any spaceport is located, but to the wider Scottish economy uh, as well. So I join uh, Dave Stewart um, and other members in urging the Scottish Government to do everything it can to ensure uh, that we grasp, we in Scotland grasp the opportunity to be at the forefront of space technology. Uh, thank you, Mr Bibby. 
John Finney, to be followed by Donald Cameron. Mr Finney, please. Yeah. Thank you, President Officer. I'd like to congratulate my colleague, uh, David Stewart, for bringing this uh, motion here. Um, and uh, he's, David's already outlined that Argyll and Butte Council and Highlands and Islands Enterprise Lenders support uh, the proposal for Campbellton to Airport to be as a spaceport, and I would certainly lend my personal support for that. I'm not pussyfoot about an issue at all. I'll just be very clear that's where it lies. And I want it to be a bit more informed debate than our runway is bigger than your runway. But um, the, the reality of the situation is, of course, there's competing demands. Of course, there's competing demands. And the reason partly for these competing demands is the estimate that uh, the UK space industry could create up to 100,000 jobs by 2030. Now, our Guy Butte Council is focused on the jobs element um, to supplement our uh, excellent cohort of timber lorry drivers. We want to, to see the number of uh, specialist jobs that would come with this. Um, now, Mr Gibson talked about the, the uh, workforce and, uh, and Mr Bibby indeed mentioned as well the expertise that exists there. And that's highlighted in the motion where it talks about the clo close proximity to areas of engineering expertise. And the reality is that the people who are involved in that type of job, that level of job, are a very mobile workforce. And I'm sure they would not only enjoy coming to the Kintyre Peninsula, but they would uh, be made very welcome there. So... Um, Another reason why uh, I would favour uh, Macrahanish is that it was purchased from the MOD and Scottish Greens are very keen to see the MOD portfolio in Scotland greatly reduced. And the fact that it's the part of a community buyout in 2012 just adds to that as well. We do have a policy in, uh, on space travel and I hope to allude to that if time permits. And part of that is that we want surrounding communities to benefit from that. And as has been said on many occasions already, there are very strong community links between um, the, the Kintyre community and Macrahanish site. Um, £50 million pounds of UK government money will go a long way. Uh, I also, too, was going to mention the Clyde Space and their Cube satellites and the, the leading role it plays in the market. And clearly, if we had a spaceport in Scotland, wherever that would be, it would mean we could design, launch, and uh, build and launch satellites from Scotland, and it certainly would be my view that for the reasons outlined that uh, Macarahanish would be that um, site. Now, the London School of Economics identifies a thing that uh, called knowledge spinovers um, from the increased um, space research and development, and that's a situation where knowledge gain can be used to create other technologies in different sectors, such as aeronautics, healthcare, transport and energy. And uh, this was news to me, I have to say, but examples of the spillover from the NASA research included advanced robotic surgery, efficient engines, memory foam mattresses, water pur purification and environmental sens sensors. And that also led into uh, um, information about the optimal sites for wind farms. Um, and of course, wind farms have become tourist attractions. We know from Whiteley the significant number, and there's no doubt, as has been mentioned, that the space station would become a tourist attraction too. Um, a policy on space exploration was passed by the Greens Conference in 2015. And if I read you the very first uh, paragraph, it's, we recognize the benefits to society provided by satellite technology in building our scientific knowledge, particularly environmental science, and in the provision of telecommunications and navigation um, um, services. It wouldn't be a, a green policy without referencing to recycling, and part of it would, would encourage the salvaging and recycling of redundant and waste material currently in orbit. Most importantly, the, the condition that I would place in support, I'm coming to a halt, thank you, uh, President Officer, yeah, is to finally to say that we would oppose the militarisation of space and we would fully endorse this bid, but also endorse the UN Outer Space Treaty, which was formally the Treaty on Principles Governing the Activities of States and the Exploration and Use of Outer Space, including the Moon and other celestial bodies. But I thank David, for bringing the, David Stewart for bringing the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Finney. I call Donald Cameron to be followed by John Scott. Mr Scott will be the last speaker in the debate. Mr Cameron. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Um, as a Highlands and Islands MSP, I am delighted and pleased to offer my support for David Stewart's motion and also the campaign from Discover Space UK, who are leading the bid for Macrohanish to gain one of the new spaceport licences from the UK government. As other members have noted, there are a variety of reasons why Macrohanish is not only a viable choice, but also an appropriate choice. Some colleagues have touched on the benefits, but I'd like to add some detail which I believe further enhances the case being made today. Firstly, as many have mentioned, the runway at Macrohanish is the longest out of all the shortlisted locations. At 349 feet long, it is the longest civil runway in Britain. And as the Macrohanish Air Base Community Company consultation document notes, it is a runway which could very easily be extended. 
In fact, that company is keen to explore extension options because whilst the current runway already meets suborbital criteria, it could meet fully orbital and even vertical launch criteria with an expansion. The company uh, has also noted that given the relatively short distance to the North Sea, there is the opportunity to use Makrahanish as a base for a sea launch site, a model that's currently used in the Pacific on the Ocean Odyssey platform. The site already has suitable capacity with on-site accommodation for around 2,000 personnel, existing hangar space, a fuel storage capacity of 6.2 million litres, fueling facilities and low-cost space for businesses. Makrahanish is only 43 miles away from Glasgow and, and 50 miles from Belfast by air and, of course, does have a direct road link to Glasgow. As an existing functional commercial airport, Makrahanish comes with the necessary initial staffing expertise and, importantly, has a manned and operational control tower. Due to the fact that it is a low-use commercial airport, this means that there is a mostly clear airspace, a vital element of the Civil Aviation Authority's spaceport criteria. As others have mentioned, the initial competition element has now been abandoned in favour of a licensing scheme. I welcome this because there are a number of suitable sites and I hope that Britain can lead the way in the spaceport industry, especially here in Scotland. So I hope that the Scottish Government will be fully behind the Macrohanish bid, as this bid will have immeasurable benefits for Kintyre itself, for our Garland Butte and for the wider area. Um, Kenneth Gibson spoke uh, as an ardent and passionate supporter of Prestwick. Um, and I also sense John Scott quite literally breathing down my neck, uh, and he will take a different view. Um, I do also note that the Transport Minister today at the Rural Economy Committee said that Prestwick um, could be handed back to the public and used as a link airport to an enlarged Heathrow. And I wonder if the Scottish Government could make their position clear on this. Um, Deputy Presiding Officer, there is, in my view, a clear case for a licence to be granted to the Macrohanish bid. It has a solid business case, but importantly, it comes with the backing of the local community, our Garland Butte Council, and Highlands and Islands Enterprise. So if we can all support this motion today, it will be a small step for this Parliament, a giant leap for Macrohanish. All these clichés coming home to roost. There is no vote, mercifully, in members' debates. John Scott, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. And can I begin uh, by apologising to the Chamber for not being here for the early part of the debate. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I wish to uh, speak in uh, support of uh, what Kenny Gibson has already said regarding Prestwick Airport. Uh, I, like Kenny Gibson, I don't wish to uh, make this a contentious debate, uh, and of course I respect Mr. Stewart's uh, support of Macrahanish and indeed my colleagues, but I feel it's uh, important for me um, to differ from the points of view that you hold, because this is too serious just to let what you say stand. Uh, Self-evidently, Macrahanish is not the location of choice for spaceport in Scotland. All the things that Mr. Gibson said are absolutely true. I'd only correct him on one fact, and that is that Spirit currently employ more than 900 people. In fact, they employ over 1,000 people. But there are 3,000 people around Prestwick Airport in what is genuinely a world-class hub of maintenance and repair and overhaul. There is nowhere else like it in Britain never mind Macrahanish, and that is absolutely vital to the assistance of a spaceport. A long runway in a remote location of itself is not enough. Road access, as Mr Gibson pointed out, motorway from Glasgow, from central Scotland, from, from London, is there to the front door now of Prestwick Airport. Mr Gibson and I well, we're not often on the same side of an argument, fought and campaigned to have the A77 upgraded from day one in this parliament, and we've now succeeded, thank goodness, to motorway status. And there is a motorway all the way from London, from Glasgow, to the front door of Prestwick Airport. There has been much uh, talked about in terms of timber lorries in our Galsha, and I'm sorry, but that is a fact of life. We need good access because a spaceport is also about providing access for customers as well as objects going into space. And plans are already well underway at Prestwick Airport for 
human space travel. There is indeed a time scale on it, but I'm afraid that I might be breaking confidences by talking about that. But plans are well underway. So, what I would also like to say is that not only does Presswick Airport have the advantage of having a, a 3,000 strong workforce around that area, all of whom are, some of whom are already involved in the design of uh, spacecraft, um, but a, a willing workforce. It also has the absolute support of the community in, in Ayrshire. Uh, that's not just South Ayrshire, that extends to the whole of Ayrshire. Uh, North and South and East Ayrshire don't always agree, regrettably, but this is one thing on which we are absolutely united. In addition, it has the support, the absolute support of the councils of Ayrshire, but particularly the, the, the Council of South Ayrshire Council. Um, and in, in terms of the length of the runway, in terms of the licensing requirements, Presswick is also uh, already virtually compliant with American licensing situations, a fact that is, um, is very important and would require very little alteration to Prestwick to make it, if, if Prestwick as an airport were in America, it would already be sufficiently compliant probably to be a spaceport. I see the presiding officer telling me to stop. I thank you for your indulgence, presiding officer, and letting me speak. Um, and I support Mr. Gibson in all that he said today. Uh, I was just telling you you were coming to the end of your four minutes. I wasn't being so unkind as to say stop. Right, um, I now uh, call on the Minister to wind up for the Government. I'm intrigued. Is it Campbellton? Is it Prestwick? Is it somewhere we haven't talked about? You've got seven minutes, Minister. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And, uh, you know, I, I, I too would be very interested by the debate. I would like to thank David Stewart for securing the debate uh, today. And it has been quite uh, obvious that there's a genuine degree of passion and interest in the subject across the Chamber uh, for proponents of both Campbelltown and Prestwick. And indeed, Mr Stewart mentioned uh, Stornoway, which I'll, re I'll refer to later on as well. Um, but uh, I've, I've been impressed by the level of detail that has been displayed. Uh, Mr Stewart, Mr Gibson, John Scott um, and others, including John Finney, Neil Bibby, uh, uh, Donald Cameron and Edward Mountain as well. So I commend all members for the uh, detail of research they have done on the subject. Scotland has a small, but it does have a dyna dynamic and growing uh, space sector, uh, which is focused on a, a number of high tech, uh, high skill and research and development intensive areas, creating Scottish uh, space industry turnover um, of around £134 million in the latest figures we have available to us. And the space industry in Scotland is spearheaded by a cluster of 128 companies, some of which were mentioned by, by Kenneth Gibson and, and others in the course of their, their speeches, at the cutting edge of their specialisms and backed by strong relationships with researchers in Scottish universities and research pools. And the Scottish space sector has a very strong international standing in small satellite systems, space science research, as well as related areas such as sensor systems and big data. And within Scotland, uh, the aspiration is to secure 10% of the UK market by 2030, potentially worth £4 billion uh, in itself. So John Finney uh, cited the economic potential at UK level and Scotland level, and thereby uh, uh, you know, the impact it can have in the local economy, such as Campbelltown or Prestwick, is clear. And I think that is probably what's fueling the very significant uh, interest and indeed passion of champions in both, uh, both locations. Now, a spaceport would act as a major catalyst for the development of Scotland's and indeed the UK's developing space sector. It would uh, attract investors to Scotland to play their part in the space industry supply chain, act as a hub for technology providers and professional services, attract space tourists indeed, and free, and free up the global bottleneck at uh, the point of small satellite launch to allow growth in the new space market. And the spaceport opportunity is not about space flight in isolation. It's not only about launching a satellite or transporting a space tour tourist, it is much more than that. The wider benefits of being a licensed spaceport are extensive, potentially impacting on manufacturing industries, research and development, academia and tourism, to name but a few. And speaking of tourism, this is not just about taking people into space, of course, as a number of members have mentioned, it's also about attracting visitors who will travel to see an operational spaceport with live launches and potential visitor centres. And again, the potential is vast in, in that respect. 
As uh, David Stewart and Edward Mountain have said, the selection process for a UK spaceport has seen a significant change. And as part of uh, the Modern Transport Bill, it was announced that the UK government would be moving to a legislative framework approach. And this is a departure from the previous bidding process to determine who would host the United Kingdom's only spaceport. A legislative framework such as being proposed brings with it a number of benefits, some of which help address the concerns that members have expressed today about picking winners. Uh, there will no longer be one winner necessarily, uh, but instead space operations will be possible from multiple sites across the country. Uh, for Scotland, an open... I will. Mr Scott. Agree with me that um, this is, will essentially be driven ultimately by the market. Those who want to put objects and people into space um, will of themselves decide which the most favourable location is. And in that regard, does he agree with me that Presswick is that place in Scotland? A good try, Mr uh, Scott. It's a, Minister. It's a, it's a good attempt. I have to give uh, marks out of 10 for, for, for effort there. But I, I would accept that the first part of what John Scott has said. If I mind, I'll, I'll come on to the other aspect of it later. But I do think, it's, um, I think it is important that uh, you know, the market will have a, a determining factor here, but there may be potential different roles, and I'll just come on to that for, for spaceports. It's not just a one-size-fits-all solution that's perhaps needed. Um, as I say, space operations may be possible from multiple sites across, across the UK, and clearly we'd be keen to see that happen in Scotland. For Scotland, an open licensing regime would mean that any Scottish site could proceed with their ambitions to become a spaceport. And this is significant given there are a range of space flight operators. If I could just develop a point, then I'll bring Mr Stewart in. Um, a range of oper operators and opportunities to be pursued, including the launch of satellites and taking tourists into, into orbit. And this revised approach could potentially lead to a number of space flight hubs across the UK, with spaceports and spacecraft instead now being licensed. I'll bring in Mr Stewart. Mr Stewart. We've discussed earlier that the decision making will really be the UK government, the Department of Transport, and the CEA. However, there is levers that the Scottish Government could apply. I mentioned in my speech the creation of an economic enterprise area or zone round about the Makrahanish area. Is that something that's been actively considered uh, by the Scottish Government? Mm -hmm. Mr. Wheeler. In, in direct response to that, as I'm relatively new post, I'm not aware of anything specific in that area, but I will have a look and investigate, and if need, need be, I will get back to Mr. Stewart around the, uh, any, any options that have been looked at for Macrahanish. Clearly, we are supporting the development of uh, Macrahanish manufacturing of wind turbines uh, for CS Wind and, and others, uh, so there's a, a strong interest in developing the Campbelltown economy, but I'll, I'll look at the specific issue he mentioned. Uh, however, I, I would like to highlight, having said there are a number of potential hubs, there are still challenges out there for potential sites. Um, while I note the points made by, by a number of uh, members, David Stewart, uh, Kenneth Gibson, Donald Cameron, uh, regarding various technical aspects of the provision that's available at uh, both Prestwick and at, Cam at uh, Macrahanish at Campbelltown, uh, there's still a lack of clarity perhaps as to what the key infrastructure requirements will be for each of these particular roles. Uh, until there is detailed guidance on what the minimum standards are required are, and been obviously mention of runway length being a, one possible criteria, it's difficult for any airport to establish whether the commercial benefits of pursuing a licence would, would achieve a reasonable return on the investment, including potentially significant infrastructure costs. Uh, there will also potentially be an increased financial risk for any site wishing to become a spaceport. Previously, the winning bidder would have been allocated an anchor tenant and, and thus guaranteed income for an initial period, and this no longer seems possible under the newly proposed uh, process. So while there are advantages, there are also uh, issues which perhaps uh, run in the other direction. Uh, two potential Scottish spaceport, site, uh, spaceport sites remain, of course. We've focused on both of those, Campbelltown and Prestwick, and the Scottish Government is committed to supporting both. Uh, I appreciate the point that Mr Gibson has made about not wishing to put his foot around, as, as he delicately put it. Um, but we have, under the licensing regime, the opportunity to support the aspirations of both, uh, both airports and communities. And I refer to the two possible Scottish sites, as well there has been interest in Stornoway Airport becoming a spaceport. As Mr Stewart has mentioned in his opening remarks, Highlands and Islands Airports Limited, as owners of the airport, have decided not to pursue the opportunity at this time. To you, Just to keep you brief, we're running short now. Yes, no, please do. Thank you, thank you, uh, President Officer. Um, we've been basically talking about horizontal takeoff uh, in the debate today. Uh, the Minister may well be aware that there is opportunities for vertical takeoff, uh, particularly in the missile launching uh, base, which I saw recently in the US uh, and in Caithness, and had a very helpful brief from Hanslands Enterprise on that. So uh, there, there is other options, Minister, perhaps we could put on the record uh, for vertical takeoff. Happy to accept Minister. that point, Presiding Officer, and we'll happily look at those, those uh, aspects in due course. But I understand that the High Isle uh, Board had previously considered whether to proceed 
with what would then have been a spaceport bid, but decided they would concentrate on their core business uh, of providing airports that serve the people of Highlands and Islands at this time. And although there is no longer a bidding process, High Isle have, have not uh, changed their position in light of that. However, I appreciate Western Isles Council have indicated a desire to further explore the spaceport opportunity uh, even after High Isle's decision, so I will look into the matters that Mr Stewart raises. But our main focus is ensuring a spaceport is based in Scotland. And, the, and both the Scottish Government and its agencies will uh, commit, support and offer advice to any Scottish site which wishes to pursue the spaceport opportunity. I'm aware that Discover Space UK have put together a credible case as to why Campbelltown could be a commercial spaceport and the airfield uh, has many attributes suitable to spaceflight operations as we've heard today, including one of the longest runways in Europe. Uh, I believe that Macra Hanish Airbase Community Company, as is mentioned by uh, Mr Mountain, uh, working with Argyll and Butte Council and Highlands and Isles Enterprise could develop a viable spaceport business model. Uh, but just as I feel that Presswick too can develop their own spaceport business model, indeed Kenneth Gibson and Neil Bibby both stressed uh, aspects of the infrastructure at Presswick that uh, set it out as a, a good opportunity as well. What is clear to me that both the potential Scottish sites, Campbelltown and Presswick, have very strong credentials that would make them excellent locations should they decide to apply for a license. And not only would these locations benefit themselves, but so would Scotland benefit as a whole. And I have been impressed by the depth of knowledge today that members have expressed in, in support of both. I would highlight, however, that it is ultimately for Campbelltown and Prestwick uh, to decide if they wish to proceed once the criteria uh, are announced. And the advantage of the new uh, legislation from my perspective is that both airfields can become a spaceport without being at the expense of each other. So I think, uh, you know, give it uh, uh, the passion that we've shown today, we can work together to make sure that Scotland secures an opportunity. And now that the UK government has announced its intention uh, to, to move towards a licensing framework, we would encourage them to ensure all interested parties are given a clear understanding of the infrastructure requirements involved. And this will enable prospective sites to develop a viable business model and determine if they wish to pursue an application to be licensed. Uh, in conclusion, presiding officer, I want to see a spaceport located in Scotland. Uh, indeed, I would like to see spaceports, uh, plural, located in Scotland, if that is possible. There is no reason why both our potential sites cannot establish a business model to seize the many opportunities that uh, being licensed would bring, and I reiterate my belief that both sites would make excellent spaceports. The Scottish Government and its agencies will continue to provide advice and support to assist our Scottish sites and stand ready to help them realise their ambition of becoming a spaceport. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. That concludes the debate, and I now close this meeting.